Hello and welcome to another very special Pro Tipster podcast. We're going to be talking again about the Winter Olympics because it's awesome. That's why. So, joining me we have Pro Tipster Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Um, hello, Paddy. Hello, everyone, to another special Olympics podcast. Good stuff. And we will have Pro Tipster Dave on later to get his special insight on how the ice hockey is going as well. So, Johnny, how's everything going up in Puyongchang? Puyongchang. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we've seen some uh, very nice uh, 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 performances. Uh, it's, uh, I have to say, it's. I would call the Olympics a uh, windy Olympics because the wind uh, is taking part in uh, changing lots of schedules of the different sports. Uh, but otherwise, I'm enjoying it. Uh, obviously, I'm a bit tired in the mornings, <laughs> uh, or let's say in the afternoons, because. Uh, all the sports take place at night and in the mornings, but uh, I'm definitely enjoying it, and that's why we are doing a second edition of the podcast. Yeah, it's it has been a bit of a pain, though, hasn't it? You go to to watch something that you're planning to watch, and then it's cancelled at the last minute, which there's nothing you can do about. This is this is life in the mountains, isn't it? Yeah, it was a case uh, yesterday uh, when I we were planning when to record a podcast and so on. Uh, obviously, there there were a few. Disciplines I didn't want to miss. Uh, yesterday was supposed to be the big day uh, for me, for, for my interest, let's say, in, in, in the winter sports. I was very uh, looking forward to, to the ladies' uh, alpine skiing slalom. I was looking forward to the ladies' uh, biathlon. Uh, however, both of these were rescheduled due to very strong winds. Uh, there was some evacuation also taking place in uh, Pyeongchang and in the Olympic Park because of the strong winds. So there were uh, there was some danger of uh, fans being hurt by the not not so much by the wind, but by the constructions. That you know yeah. these constructions, like uh, the tent for the say for the press, uh, the tent for uh, some souvenir shops are just temporary constructions. And uh, when the wind is too strong, it's kind of dangerous. So there were some concerns yesterday, but uh, luckily nobody was hurt, and uh, lots of disciplines were rescheduled. But uh, you know that's life. We cannot find the mother nature. That's that's one thing for sure. Yeah, absolutely for sure. But look, I presume that uh, when <laughs> when uh, the Olympians aren't um, aren't taking part in their sports, they're they're keeping uh, otherwise busy. There's there's been a hundred and eleven thousand condoms distributed. I do believe. Uh, I've read this information. Uh, you know, when you when you consider the number, and you say we have we have two two thousand nine hundred twenty five athletes, and we have one hundred and ten thousand condoms. <laughs> you know, I, I think we can do the math ourselves. <laughs> so I'm not sure uh, what keeps them more busy if it's. Uh, <laughs> Keep your feet anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the sport itself, or actually some, uh, uh, you know, and and I would be especially interested yesterday uh, during the Valentine's Day, <laughs> how many con. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think I know we're getting way off here, but I think they should get rid of the condoms because, like, they would just have all these beautiful, athletic, genetic wonders of babies. You know, they, they, they'd have this kind of new master race or something. Although maybe that sounds a bit fascist. No, that's not a good <laughs> idea at all. Keep the condoms. Maybe that's why they have the condoms so that some super master race of Olympians don't take over the world. <laughs> Okay, we're gone. We're gone way too Pink Floyd now. I think. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about the Tonga uh, flag bearer. He made headlines, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I just uh, you remember when last time when we were recording the first podcast, it was just shortly before the Olympic uh, opening ceremony of the Olympics in Pyeongchang. Uh, um, there were a couple of highlights uh, I really liked about the ceremony. Uh, obviously, there was this uh, uh, all the countries were coming onto the stadium with their flag bearers, uh, with their flags. And one guy, he's called, well, forgive me for pronouncing it, but it's a very difficult one. Taufa Tofua, uh, the Tonga flag bearer, uh, that came out, well, let's say this way, half naked. Uh, it, of course, it, it's something very traditional for uh, Tonga, uh, but it was very cold. It was something like 32, uh, degrees Fahrenheit uh, at, the, at the the opening ceremony, so it was really cold. He was quite brave to he was bare, 
bare chested only, but uh, with the tra- traditional Tonga mask. Uh, he did it already in uh, Rio de Janeiro because where he was competing in Taekwondo, in Pyeongchang he is competing in cross country screen. Obviously, he is not one of the favorites, but you know there are different ways of making the headlines, and uh, he managed to do it. Uh, he had some oil on himself, obviously not to be suffering too much uh, with the cold, but still, I think he is. Uh, quite brave man. Oh, what a tough man, huh? <laughs> well done to him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there, there were a couple of more uh, uh, highlights of the of the ceremony. Um, obviously, the the slogan of the ceremony was uh, peace in motion. Uh, and the slogan, the whole slogan of the Olympics is, of course, uh, to bring the peace and to make sport uh, the number one topic in the world, at least for some time. Uh, of course, there was this Korean United flag. The, the South Korea and North Korea marched onto the stadium under unified Korean flag. That was something we talked about already in the first podcast. Uh, it was not the first time that they've done it, but obviously uh, under the cer- cer- uh, current political circumstances, it's always uh, something nice to see. Uh, there was <laughs> some headlines about uh, USA Vice President Mike Pence, who was very close to... Uh, the sister of the North Korean leader Kim Yo Yong Kim Yo Yong is her name. Uh, they were like literally a few meters uh, next to each other, and you know how with with the politics and how everything is going in the world, that was another headline. Mm. But just to talk about something more interesting for sports fans, uh, there were uh, there were drones used to draw these uh, uh, Olympic rings. Which uh, and I think they they made a new world record in number of uh, drones used. It was 1,218 drones uh, making um, making these five Olympic uh, rings. It was quite spectacular. And then we had uh, Yuna Kim who uh, fired the Olympic flame. She's a, a for, former ice skater. Uh, she yeah she used the Olympic. Uh, she, she fired up the Olympic cauldron. It was quite a spectacular Olympic ceremony, I have to say. Uh, it was not too long. Uh, it was uh, they used uh, some five kids from the from the local local kids as the main story. Uh, it was very it was very nice, I have to say. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty cool as well. Uh, I, I like all this kind of stuff as well. Um, uh, uh, medal count though. Who's who's doing the best? I think it's Germany, isn't it? At the moment, Germany have the most. Yeah, the at, most, the moment, uh, the at, the, at the moment, at the moment, at the moment, Germany, yeah, uh, with uh, eight goals, uh, they are. I mean, they are traditionally a very strong, uh, very strong country. They've done well in biathlon. Uh, they've done well in uh, other sports as well. Uh, then it's Norway, who are traditionally very strong in, uh, in especially in cross country. Skiing uh, with other uh, Scandinavian nations, and then it's on the third place at the moment is the Netherlands. Well, Netherlands, we will talk about it a bit later, mostly for their uh, famous speed skating. I uh, think uh, they won all the medals, all the golds from the speed skating competition so far, both men and women, which is impressive, uh, I have to say. Uh, looking at the individuals. Uh, who got the most medals up till now? We've got uh, German uh, Laura Dahlmeier in, uh, in biathlon, who won uh, two gold medals. She's at the moment competing in another yeah. biathlon competition in the 15 kilometers uh, race. But I think at the end, uh, it, it's going on. Uh, it's going on in the moment uh, as we record this podcast. But she's not uh, in the position to win another gold at the moment. And then we've got Charlotte Kala. From Sweden, who won uh, two, two men? Sorry, no, she won one uh, gold and one silver. Or so, in the cross-country skiing. So yeah, Laura Dahlmeier, the biathlonist from Germany, it remains the the main, uh, the most successful uh, athlete at the, at the moment. But of course, it's only Thursday, and the Olympics last until next Sunday. So more than a week of winter sport. Well, probably longer if, so if, still if, if, it keeps, if, it, if the weather continues to be so windy, it could go on for another month. <laughs> 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 you know? 
Uh, right, sure. Uh, where are we now? So let's test the table. Uh, what's next? Uh, ah, so, uh, yeah, tell us then, uh, how, 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 how should I intro this thing? So, uh, you want to go through the days, yeah? They want to Well, we can, thing. yeah, we can, we don't have to mention everything. It's just the highlights, what mm-hmm. I picked out from, so I can. No, that's okay, that's through. okay. Uh, what I can do then is I can say, alright, so, um, so, um, I'll put a little music break in here, and then we can come back. Yeah. So, Johnny, on uh, day one and two, uh, we had the Luge, the Biathlon, and, of course, the Dutch uh, did very well in the speed skating. Can you tell us a bit about how the first couple of days went? Yeah, so we'll try to pick out just a few highlights from uh, what what's going on so far, uh, and how did it go, and what, 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 are the, what were the most outstanding uh, results. On day two, the the German Felix Loch uh, surprisingly didn't win the gold in Luge. He was, of course, the biggest uh, favorite uh, favorite to win it. He won two already two gold medals, but this time uh, he let's say it this way he didn't he didn't do well in his uh, fourth fourth run. He was uh, he was first up in third uh, three runs. He didn't do well in the last one. He dropped. Dropped to fourth place, uh, and uh, Austria's David Gleischer won the gold medal with USA Chris Mazur and Germany's Johannes Ludwig taking uh, the the, bron- the silver and uh, bronze. It was one of the biggest surprises of uh, the Olympics so far because everyone expected uh, Felix Bloch to to quite easily win the Luge men's competition. On day one, one and two, we had also Martin Furka, the Norwegian. Johannes Tingnes Poel, who were the favorites for the biathlon sprint 10 kilometers in the men's competition, but they they both I watched watched the race. They did really bad. Uh, they had plenty of errors with the sh- in in the shooting part. So it was Arndt Pfeiffer who won the gold medal, quite surprisingly as well. But this comes, you know, this comes to it, it's always like like this. It's Olympics. It's one race uh, in the World Cup, or uh, you have several ways to prove that you're the strongest one but in Olympics you have only one one chance uh, at a time so either you perform at that particular moment or you're you don't have uh, you have a chance maybe in, in the next four years but uh, not earlier than that there were some nice stories with Mark McMorris from Canada who won the bronze medal in men's slope style uh, I read he had a horrific uh, mountain crash last year there was this picture on social media of him in the hospital, he had uh, quite severe injuries, but he recovered in, in a year. So this was a this was a nice story. And we had the phenomenal Sven Kramer from uh, Netherlands, who won his third 5,000 meter title in speed skating uh, in a race where uh, Netherlands took all three three medals. Uh, as we mentioned already, Netherlands that's that's a sport. Netherlands are all all over. There are some completely else that were uh, in. Comp- in comparison to other nations, they are absolutely dominating this this sport, and uh, I can ex- I can see them dominating it uh, throughout the Olympics. Uh, Johnny, why 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 are the Dutch so good at this? What was it? A um, you know, did they make a decision? Is it a kind of a cynical thing? Did they take a decision uh, ten or fifteen years ago and says, right, this is the sport we're going to concentrate on? I, I believe it must uh, must come. It, it's a historical thing. Uh, because, uh, from, from, I mean, I'm not that old, I have to say, but, uh, since I. Well, you're no I, spring chicken either, man. <laughs> <laughs> since I followed the Winter Olympics, and that's what, uh, let's, I mean, that's from, uh, let's see, Nagano, 98, uh, which, 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 that's the first Olympics I remember watching. Uh, they were always the dominant force in, uh, the speed skating. Uh, I believe that's, I cannot, I'm not, I cannot say I, I have a, Explanation for you why they are so good at it, but uh, it's a very traditional, traditional sport in there. Uh, you know, it's a flat country, so uh, yeah. Uh, but of course, that's that's not the reason. <laughs> but, but but they've got the facilities. They've got uh, uh, the how to say it properly. They've got the the strength in in in, in coaching and uh, in the method they use and it seems that the world is not able to 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 compete against them in this sport well 
of course there's always uh, once in a while some some speed skaters who get into the medal positions but it's mostly mostly Netherlands yeah yeah well look I mean the Netherlands they were very good at at, at, at football a long while ago back in the 70s and 80s they were dominant but you know people catch up you know so they won't always be dominant probably so on day three then there was a, a, a biathlon yeah. and yeah how did they go yeah on day three we got uh, Laura Dahlmeyer again she won the second goal after winning uh First, she won the 7.5 kilometer sprint on day one, and then she uh, she she booked her second gold medal on day three in the biathlon's pursuit. Uh, but finally, Martin Furcard won his uh, biathlon's 12.5 kilometer pursuit after finishing eighth the day before in sprint. So with it's uh, Martin Furcard, you know you have to you have to uh, know that Martin Furcard is the, probably the best biathlonist at the moment. He him and the uh, Norwegian bull were the favorites. Uh, it was quite a disappointment for Martin to finish eighth on uh, in the sprint race. But I watched uh, uh, the first race and uh, he was he was phenomenal. I mean, from eighth to because just to explain, Paddy, in the first race of biathlon, you start uh, you start. On, on, on the start, you, you start from, uh, the position you finished, uh, uh, the day before or two days before in the sprint race. So let's say in the sprint race, you finished eight, 25 seconds, let's say after the, after the leader, then you start 25 seconds after the leader in the person race. So, yeah. The, 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 so, the, so the, the, who won the gold medal in the sprint race already has a good position to win another medal because it depends how big the difference is between the biathlonists. They have some advantage. So it was quite phenomenal to, I think he was losing something like 50 seconds, uh, before the start of the race, uh, for the first place. And, but he was, he, he was shooting really well and he made his way all, all the way through. And then we had, again, going back to speed skating, Iran Boost from Netherlands. She won another medal for, for Netherlands winning the 1500 meter race. It only proves uh, what we spoke about a few times. The Netherlands are absolutely a giant force in speed skating, also at this Olympics. It's almost unfair how good, how good they are. <laughs> uh, but so, uh, number, uh, sorry, we're going, we're going to, onto day four then. So, uh, this is the one that, that I, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm big into. I'm big into the, uh, the skiing. So, Hersher, he finally did it, didn't he? Yeah, he made it finally. It was, uh, I have to say, it was the first uh, alpine skiing discipline that took place because uh, the days before they were all rescheduled because of the wind. Obviously, there is a certain amount of wind you can you can allow for the race, but you cannot. Uh, you have to have mind in the safety of the of the skiers first. So this was the first day that actually they, uh, the men's combine, which co- uh, combines of, uh, first is the downhill race and then it's the slalom race. The, the downhill race was a bit moved. The start of the race was, the start point was a bit moved because of the wind. So it was a bit shorter, which gave advantage more to the, to the specialists in slalom because, uh, they could, uh, they didn't lose so much time in the, in the, in the downhill. Which they and they could could have easily catched up in 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 the slalom. So Marco Hischer finally won his uh, gold. Before I have to say, before the Olympics, he was saying something like because he ne- he was uh, he's a six-time world champion and World Cup winner. He won the silver in Sochi in slalom because he's uh, good in slalom and giant slalom. Before before the Olympics, he was in an interview. He said, "Oh, because oh, of course they asked him when he's finally going to win his first first Olympic medal, and he was kind of." You know, very hesitant. He didn't really, he didn't seem to care too much. He said, Oh, okay. If I don't win, nothing happens. The world will not change. But now that he won finally the gold medal, he was jumping. I saw, I saw the, <laughs> saw it live and he was like so happy. And of course, so he was, and, and in an interview after the race, he finally said that uh, now the people will not ask me anymore in Austria <laughs> when, when I'm going to win Olympic medal. So there was some reveal that, uh, that he finally uh won his first first medal and he he can win more 
yeah. He's a big fa- yeah. big favorite in Giant Slalom and in uh, Slalom. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, there's days. two more on uh, when is it? Wednesday. He's Super G and it's a, yeah, Super G Giant Slalom and uh, downhill as well. Yeah, so yeah. He, he can add another two medals to to his to these he, as well. He is very capable of taking. I would say in slalom, I don't see anyone else. Uh, I don't see anyone else taking taking the medal from the gold from him. Obviously, it can happen. You know, it's sport. Uh, you rely on yourself. It's an in, in, in individual sport. Anything can happen. But I don't expect anyone to. He is the biggest favorite for me. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. I don't Actually, I, I, to... I looked up his odds, uh, Johnny, while we were researching this. His odds, <laughs> his odds to win, uh, is one point three seven, and the next best in the men's is Henrik Kristofferson, and he's at nine point zero. Oh. So yeah, you see, that's big for. That's big for itself. No. I think Mar- Marco and and fair fair enough. Uh, I he deserves it. I mean, for all the efforts he's put into. Into skiing and uh, all the years that he's uh, he he wasn't lucky enough, for, let's say, or uh, that not to win the, the Olympic medal. I think he deserves it. So even if he wins uh, two or three, three more, I I think it's going to be fine. Oh, absolutely, and that's great. It's great for Austria as well because you know a lot of the. Uh, they kind of, you know, the, 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 Germany wins so many medals that it's great for Austria just to, just to take a, a step above their old enemy and just say, ha ha ha, look at us, we're better, you know? <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, uh, skiing is the number one sport yeah. in, in Austria. Of course. Mainly because of the, of the Alps. Uh, yeah. There's so many people skiing in Austria and even the national, national TV or uh, when in the winter they show uh, like all, all the Alpine skiing. Uh, disciplines life and they have a huge coverage because yeah it's a it's a massive sport uh, in 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 this country so uh, I can I can say that uh, when he will be competing in South Korea the whole whole Austria will be awake mm-hmm. to watch it because obviously these Alpine skiing disciplines uh, just to speak a bit about the schedule uh, these Alpine skiing bis- disciplines take place early morning uh, Central Europe time they are scheduled for uh, Early afternoon or even uh, late morning in uh, South Korea, because uh, obviously it's uh, for example biathlon and cross cross country skiing. It's not so difficult if you have it under the floodlights uh, in the evening. But uh, alpine skiing, you need you need to have uh, during the day. Very rarely, even in the World Cups uh, during the year, you have yeah, uh, these races scheduled. The there are yeah. few there are few slaloms. Yeah, because you know slalom has a short. Short, uh, short uh, ski track. Uh, so there, uh, slalom they can have uh, floodlights uh, covering the whole slope. But the rest of these disciplines, I don't think. Yeah, I've no, seen it, them. it'd be far too difficult. Look, I, I did night skiing once, and uh, it's, it's quite because, difficult. It, uh, well, uh, ours was especially difficult because we had drank about eight, eight or twelve snaps, I think, and we didn't have any floodlights. All we had was the moonlight, and it was oh. the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Well, <laughs> you're, you're a brave man. I'm an <laughs> idiot. That's what I am. <laughs> how many, how many beers did you have before? A, a lot, before a lot. We, we were, we were, we were. The gondola had been closed about four hours by the time we decided we'd leave the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Very well done, Paddy. So this is the problem I'm, when I'm, Irish I'm, people go skiing, you know. <laughs> I'm happy that you're still here because that was quite dangerous as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't drink and ski, lads. It's a very, uh, yeah, just don't, don't do it from experience. Um, what else for you? Yes. So uh, tell us about, about, about Chloe Kim. Uh, yeah, Chloe. Cool. Oh, Kim, uh, she she was the on day four. She was the youngest winner on snow and snowboard uh, halfpipe. She is uh, 17 years old and 296 days. Um, she won the halfpipe race. Uh, uh, there was this interesting tweet she had after one of her runs that uh, she was tweeting she's hungry because she didn't finish her morning sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. you're competing for the gold, and, and moments later she won the gold medal. So <laughs> imagine. Im- Imagine you're competing for the gold and all you think of is food. Yeah, teenagers, man. Teenagers, can, you know. Well, I, I can imagine doing it as well. I mean, you know, I'm hungry, so I'm hungry. Well, uh, <laughs> what's what's more important than uh, being well fed and uh, satisfied in the newsrooms? So yeah, she she made a history. Uh, USA are traditionally strong in these half pipe uh, snowboard competitions. Uh, 
So Chloe came one in the with the women's part, and we will talk about it a bit later. But we can mention it already now. Uh, the, the day later, uh, Sean White, the legend of the sport, beat the Japanese Ayumu Hirano by 2.5 points to to take the gold uh, from the men's competition in the half pipe race. Uh, it was his third goal after winning it in Turin and Vancouver. And that was this interesting interview with him. He said he wants to compete in uh, the next Summer Olympics uh, oh, yeah? in, sk- in skateboard competition. Uh-huh. Because there's this new sport introduced in the next uh, uh, Summer Olympics. Okay, now uh, and now comes a question for you, Paddy. You know where the next Summer Olympics games will be held? Oh God! It's a uh, it's a quiz competition. <laughs> oh, I should know this. Um... Okay, I'll give I'll, I'll give you advice. It's in uh, Asia. It's close to South Korea. <sighs> but it's not in Korea, obviously. No. I have no idea. Is it China? Man, no. The, the, the country that is probably the closer to 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 South Korea. It's not North Korea. North Korea. Korea. Hey, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, one of them. I don't know. My geography is awful. Japan. Japan, idiot. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Tokyo. Oh, okay, Tokyo Olympics. I'm gonna be skate because because Sean White he was a skateboarder skateboarder long before he was a snowboarder. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, and, but until now, the, the Olympic, uh, program didn't have, uh, skateboarding in, uh, you know, in, so they decided to introduce it in, uh, the next Summer Olympics, so he said that he, got, he wants to qualify and he wants to take, a Summer Olympic medal as well. Well, I can see that, I mean, after winning three gold medals in, uh, in snowboarding, uh, maybe he wants a new motivation. I can, I can see why. Mm. It'd be tough for him to get into it though. The the, the Americans, especially on like the X Games and stuff like that, on the you know what goes on the Extreme Sports Channel, they're, they're obviously the best. It, it might be tough for him to get in because, I, but I know from reading interviews with him and stuff like that that he is a very keen skateboarder and he was he um I think he might have even been professional for a while before he went to snowboarding. I'm not too sure about that, but uh, look it up anyway. Um, yeah, yeah we had was someone one, kicked one... out for doping. Uh, yes, that, that was right. Uh, we had the first, first, uh, doping, uh, doping uh, scandal, let's say. Well, it was not, I mean, he was identified of doping. He, he said he's not, uh, aware of, of it, but he, uh, I mean, he, uh, he admitted, well, not that he admitted, he accepted the, the, the violation or how, how to call it properly. He accepted the, the fine of being, uh, thrown out of the Olympics. It yeah. was Japanese speed skater Kei Saito. Uh, he was the first one to be excluded from the 2018 Winter Olympics. It's always, you know, it's always sad to see athletes being excluded for the Olympics for doping, but, uh, unfortunately it happens. Even though they know that, uh, nowadays the methods to, uh, to prove them of uh, using doping are very, let's say, very very good. Uh, the methods improved massively over the last couple of years, but you still find these couple of athletes that try their luck. I have to say, some of them don't do it, or most of them don't do it uh, intentionally. I mean, it's it's more of a thing that they either use some uh, medicine that they shouldn't, or they just or they use it, but they didn't uh, announce it to the yeah. uh, doping chaperones that they have used it, and uh, to the Olymp- Olympic Committee that they've used this this and this medicine. So it's more of uh, not being careful enough, because of course there are some medicines which which you can use, but you need to announce it uh, ahead that you use them for uh, health reasons. So if you if you don't do it, then you and you're caught, then bad luck for you. Yeah, exactly. It's like the, uh, who's the tennis player? The Russian. Uh, what's her name? Sharapova. Oh, yeah, Sharapova. So, so Sharapova, I mean, when she was banned, she was banned for taking something that had been put on the banned list. She said she didn't know, but if she had declared that she had been taking it, she probably would have been alright. It's, it's a very, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it, that makes it sound very easy. It's but, quite, but the it's thing is, true. like, like yeah, this list, there's like, you know, it could be 40, 50 things added on 
and 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 you don't realize uh, what's been put on plus as well because of the weird uh, drug laws in especially europe different drugs have different names in different countries so something in, in ireland has a different name than something in germany it's the same thing but for trademarks it has a different name and depending on what name is on the list that the olympic council gives you you could have uh, it could just be uh, 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 what do you get, a case of, of a mistaken name or something and then you're banned like that can happen and you can appeal it and you know it's, it's messy yeah. it's really messy i, I agree it's, it's can be quite cruel but at the same time you're a professional athlete it's one of your responsibilities oh yeah of course to, of course of course yeah oh, no, you i know, agree yeah you're you're paid quite good money most of the top athletes to you know, to really take care of themselves, and they have uh, even they have uh, staff members who take care of their medicine, let's mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. and these things. So, uh, of course, you need to have people you trust in your team, uh, also because of these things. And so, joining us now, then we have our uh, pro tipster expert in ice hockey. Hello, pro tipster Dave. How's it going? Hello, very well. <laughs> But I'm sorry, I'm now watching on Badland, so... Who's winning? Who's winning? Who's winning? Who's winning? They're still running, but I'm watching on our Veronika Witkova, who already won silver medal, or she was bronze, but right now I hope that she will won another. But she's in life. Last shotting with sec. Okay, okay. Okay, yes. It's clear shouting she's <laughs> running till the end, but... This is, this is live coverage of the Winter Olympics on protest. Yeah, it's right now. <laughs> so look, um, uh, tell us, how's the, how's the ice hockey been going? I, look, I think that the most famous right now would be the Slovakia team who won over the Russia yesterday. But we are waiting all for our Czech team. But we've got, I think... Quite a good team because our goalkeepers would be the best on the tournament for sure. Because from the Russian league, Franzos and Furk are two of the, I think I can tell you that two of the best of the league. So we've got in one team two best goalkeepers from the Russian league. But then we've got quite trouble with scoring goals because we don't have chance to get Strikers from NHL, mm. as lots of the teams, all of the teams. But right now, I can tell that tournament will go easier. Like we will beat the Korea in few hours. It's in three hours from now. I think we will beat them for sure. I'm sure with that. But then I'm afraid of match against the Canada. I'm afraid that we will lose this one because we don't have. Quite not so much strikers. We've got the Chervenka from Switzerland and Birner from Switzerland, but the rest of the guys are like they are like pass guys. Like they like passing, extra passes, extra, extra pass, but nobody will shoot. So that's the problem of the Czech hockey nomination right now. So I and think that we will finish in the group on the second, second place. Okay. Dave, you, know, you think you think qualify? Much more, sorry. Do you I think you qualify because there's 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 uh, four places. There's the three groups, so the top position yeah. from each group, and then this, and then the best runner up. Do you think Czech will make the runner up spot? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Paddy, Paddy, just just to make just to make it clear, it's uh, first for, for, first teams. For, for, so the group winners qualify to the quarterfinal, and the best runner up. Yeah. And all the other teams qualify as well. Into the playoff. Ah, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even course. if they, even if they finish, let's say third or fourth, they still qualify. So basically, everyone makes the playoffs. It's just if you finish top or you're the best runner up, you make directly the quarterfinal, which yeah. makes you, which you have one, one game less. So my question for Dave would be, uh, mm-hmm. Czech Republic lost the preparation, the last preparation game before the Olympics against the Finland, uh, 2-0. Uh, by the time our listeners will listen to this podcast, the game with, with, uh, Korea will be, Already over, so I will. Uh, my questions will head more to the next games. You said uh, you're quite afraid of the game against Canada, uh, yeah. but I, I, I would have the concerns also against Switzerland. We know Switzerland; they have a very good league. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have some players from the Switzerland, uh, yeah. from the Swiss league as well. So they have a good team. They played together uh, for quite a few years at the World Championships. So, um, mm-hmm. how is 
the mood in the uh, in the country? How do people believe this team? Uh, what, what are the expectations of the team going for the Olympics? Okay, so first of all, I hope uh, you didn't ask for our last pre-tournament game with Finland because it was horrible, absolutely horrible. If you will not score the whole game, that's horrible. But the mood in the country, you know the Czech is ice hockey country, for sure. It's 20 years from Nagano, tournament of tournaments, where play the best players on the world and we won it. So we are for sure proud of our ice hockey team all over. It doesn't matter who played in that. So we are proud ice hockey fans for sure. But right now on this Olympic Games, without NHA players, I think that we must be aware of Switzerland for sure because they play, as you thought, together too long for us and we are nomination our nomination is changing all over the years for sure I can tell you that for example there is Mertel from Pelzen and he played only six preparation games in national team so he's beginner of wearing national jersey. But I'm not afraid too much of Switzerland as I believe that we will play this game like a draw game? I see it as a draw game with the Switzerland and who will win the extra point in overtime? He will finish second in our group because Canada, I think, anyway, without the players of NHL, they will finish on the first place in our group. The Switzerland will be third and I hope that the Czech national team will be second. Mm. But on the other side, I think that we cannot uh, think that Korea will be so easy for us. I saw them on my own eyes in Radis Karawai, I think. They played on Spreng- Sprengler Cup, maybe it was, or something like that. Sorry for the name, I don't know right now. But they played against our national team. And it was around 3-1 or 3-2 maybe, something like that. So they are not, as we will beat them, for example, 7-0. For sure not. Mm. I expect that it will be a tough game. Okay, let's, uh, what about your uh, expectations of the overall standings of the Czech team? Do you see them getting a medal? Yeah, we are on the tournament to win it all the time. So I think that in final we will beat the Canada team and we will win. Nice. Well, I, sure like, I, like, I like that confidence. I like you're, that. You're very positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your yeah. insight. Like here, though, Dave, um, why, why are you so afraid of the Canadians, but like not, because uh, like Slovenia beat America, uh, beat USA the other day, because obviously they're missing the NHL, NHL stars. But why, why are you so scared of, of, of Canada then? Yeah, I'm afraid of Canada. There's only one reason, because I saw their pre, pre-tournament game against the Finland. We played against the Finland as well and we lost 2-0. We didn't score but Canada beat them I think 5-1 without a problem. So that's the reason okay. why I'm afraid that they are very well prepared for this tournament. Alright, fair enough. That makes sense then. Thanks uh, Protester Dave for coming on this uh, special Winter Olympics podcast. Thank you very much for your ice hockey knowledge. Yeah, and pleasure, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll speak to you again before the end. Yeah, for sure. Bye-bye. All right, Johnny, we're back then. So big thanks to Dave for coming on and, and uh, speaking to us about the ice hockey and what's uh, what's in store. I'm sure we'll have him back on uh, next week. Uh, I hope we're going to be doing another one of these next week. Anyway, I certainly want to. And uh, let's say, uh, so what have we got to look ahead to? Uh, more alpine skiing, yeah? Yeah, we, we we can look forward to more alpine skiing. I mean, most most of the competitions, uh, most of the disciplines in alpine skiing are yet to come. Uh, Michaela Schifrin uh, started her Olympic uh, adventure today. She already won the first gold gold medal in the men's giant slalom. Uh, but there is more more to come for her, but also for Marcel Hirscher, as we mentioned, and uh, even. Uh, even Lindsay, Lindsay won uh, for 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 another. She will compete for another medal for USA. So there's plenty to look forward in the Alpine skiing. There's plenty of to look forward in biathlon. Uh, as we are recording the podcast now, I can say that Laura Dalmayer will not definitely. She didn't win the, her third gold medal. 
uh, I think she fin- she finished uh, as, as I'm looking at the standings, she finished third. But uh, there's still go go back there for a second on on on, on Lindsay Vaughan because uh, yeah. you know she's she's had some awful injuries over the last couple of years. Uh, um, actually, very she's very unlucky with mm. the, with the injuries over the past few years. And obviously, I think she's how old is she? I think she's something like 33 already. Mm-hmm. So obviously, it's not for skiing. It's uh, quite the age. I mean, of course, you have older skiers, but uh, now I'm talking about get, you know suffering injuries. Yeah, the older yeah. you are, the, the longer it takes to recover from yeah. uh, injuries. Like and you know, the injuries. Knee, it, her knees must be shot. Exactly. Like, like she, I, she'd be crippled with arthritis in in 20 or 30 years' time. Like. Exactly, that's what I mean. And you know, when you uh, when you suffer an injury, or you know, the injuries you suffer in uh, skiing generally, they are quite serious injuries. Always, you know, we don't get just hurt like you know for a few weeks, uh, for a few days, because the uh, the way the you you got the ski boots very firmly on your on your feet, and uh, and the speed that comes with let's say with the downhill or with the super giant. Uh, race something when when something goes wrong in th- those races, <laughs> it's usually it's usually a serious injury. It's so <laughs> it's true. But she is favorite. She's favorite on um uh on oh god I don't remember it was either the super G or the downhill. One of them she's favorites and the next favorites well, were so uh, Sophia uh, Goggia and Lara Good. But but their um I think I think uh, Vaughn was about three point five and they were uh, five and six something like that. So she's um. Yeah, they reckon the bookies reckon she's still going to win this. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I can see her as one of the favorite. Let's say this way. Uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, men's uh, sorry, women's sport for me is generally very unpredictable. Mm. Uh, we will we we will talk about it uh, in our next tennis podcast again, but uh, also in the winter sports. Uh, then, especially in skiing, where you know a, a very small error uh, can decide, can be a difference uh, whether you take the gold or not. Obviously, then there are some disciplines in alpine skiing, like like slalom or giant slalom, where you have Mich- Michaela Schifrin, who is simply pheno- phenomenal in her age of, if I'm not mistaken, she's twenty twenty three, uh, and she's already a legend of the sport. You know, she she it's unbelievable. She wants the. She's gonna. I'm pretty sure she's gonna win the slalom race. I mean, if you would check the odds on her for slalom, I, to be honest, I didn't check them, but they must be like one point ten, fifteen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I don't see anyone else who can even come close to her. Uh, there are some Slovakian ladies uh, skiers uh, who, who who can challenge her, uh, but still don't expect them to take the gold from her. And uh, she's just phenomenal. That's that's one of the athletes, the, the most consistent athletes, uh, not only on these games, but generally when I'm talking about winter sports. Yeah, she's uh, 1.3 in the slalom. Really? Yeah. 1.3? That's, that's quite generous. That's quite generous, uh, I have to say. I would, I'm not saying I'm, uh, I will bet a house on her to win. But <laughs> but uh, I don't see anyone taking the yeah, it's, it's amazing that that both uh, disciplines in the men's and the women's they have such strong favorites. Like she is, what do they say? One point three, Hersher one point three seven. Okay, Lindsay Vaughn is in Super G. It's a different event, and but she's three point five. Like I said, God, Godgia is five. Laura Good six, and then the rest are way off. So. Um, I mean, mm. from a betting perspective, it looks like uh, uh, favorites are nailed on. But the, 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 it, it, sorry, it doesn't look like there's a lot of competition. But in fairness, like if you watch, if you watch these sports, like you said, just the tiniest mistake, and you know, a hundred of a second may as well be a minute in 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 in, in, the, in these sports. You know, mm. right, it's why I love them. You know, it's the slightest error, and you're punished. It's a bit like uh, it this was Champions League football is a bit like that. Like if we saw. Juventus against uh, uh, um, Tottenham the other night. Uh, Gigi Buffon made two mistakes, and uh, the Spurs scored uh, two goals. So you're punished immediately, and this is why these sports are are so yeah. good. Um, I suppose then, uh, Johnny, uh, we can wrap up. Uh, you do have a quiz for me, though, don't you? Oh no, sorry, yes. there's one more event. There's, so... one, there's one more event I want to I want to mention. Uh, the men's ski jumping, the the large hill, is uh, on uh, what day is that on? It's on th- Saturday. Yeah, that's going to be a big one in Poland, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, you live in Poland. Uh, 
how how excited Polish are about ah, the they're mad for it. Every every, <laughs> every male Pole is an expert <laughs> ski jumping now. So they are. It's like uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like when well, I suppose ski jumping has been popular in in Poland. It took a bit of a dip when uh, when uh, what's his name retired. Um, oh, Adam oh, Malik with the mustache. Uh, Ah, uh, quick! Have, have, have to, have to. Uh, Adam Malik. Ah, uh, well, yeah. When Adam Malik retired, it took a bit of a dip, but now there's this uh, kind of newer generation of of younger uh, poles who are in it. You have um, Kubatsky, Kubatsky, Hula, and of course, but the big one is Kamil Stock. Kamil Stock's amazing, and uh, and the Polish fans are class as well. They travel all over Europe, and and there's loads of them out in in Korea supporting him as well. So uh, he's 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 up against it with uh, Andrews Wellinger. Uh, they are uh, number so stock is the favorite. Wellinger second favorite. Uh, third favorite is Robert Johansson. Uh, they're both at six, and then but the rest of them then it, it, it trails off after that. So Cameron Stock looks like uh, he's going to be the winner there. He's um, yeah, look, he's a class act, but uh, like we saw in in the previous events, uh, if if it's if it's windy up there at all, and can happen, and you're uh, you're risking your life. Yeah, yeah, with the ski jumping, it's quite. Uh quite uh, strange because uh, they get lots of these points deductions for for the wind so even if you have a good wind and you you make a good jump like the distance is good you get a deduction because of the yeah. the support you had in the wind so <laughs> it's sometimes it's not even good to have a good wind yeah. in your back because then you get a big deduction so that's uh, quite tricky for me to say yeah, it's a funny one, but I'm, I, I know people will definitely be watching it here anyway, and the pubs will be full, so they will. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, sure, look, quick, I know you have a quiz before, for me. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but just quickly before we, we get to the quiz, I want to uh, mention the bobsled. Uh, there will be Nigerian and Jamaican bobsled uh, ladies teams, which uh, I read about. Uh, it's it's going to be, we talked about it in the first podcast. It's going to be quite interesting to see how these do, but uh, apparently Jamaican uh, bobsled team have a problem because uh, they fired the coach just before the Olympic Games, mm. and the coach actually wants to take the, you know, how do you call this instrument where you use for bobsled? The box, or how do you call it in English? The sleigh. The s- Sorry, bobsled. Sleigh, isn't it bobsled? Yeah. Mm. So she 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 says that it's it's her. So she, she wants to take it away from them. So, but then I'm wondering how they're going to how they're going to compete. You know, <laughs> so that's just a yeah interesting small small. Play some luges together. <laughs> okay, getting to, getting to the quiz. So right here we go. You no, know, in the first podcast we did a quiz in the beginning. Now I decided to do a quiz at the end to test if you if you were if you were listening carefully during our podcast oh, because all Johnny. this information a very were, attentive listener were mentioned in the podcast so you should be able to answer them all of them easily let's start let's go what's the time difference between korea and central europe let's say poland or central where, europe, where we are it is uh, eight hours wow oh yeah Spot on. second one what's the most successful duck sport at the Winter Olympics. Uh, the Dutch sport or or, or the guy? Um, no, no, duck sport. The, sport. Uh, the not, speed skin. Yeah. Speed skin. Very well done. Yes. Third one. Who is the most successful athlete so far at the Olympics? I will give you a hint. It's a biathlonist. It's a lady from it's Germany. German. Yeah, yeah. You just mentioned her there. You said that she hadn't won her third yeah. gold, but yeah. she has won two. So she's with Lara Dal Dalmeyer. Dalmeyer. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um. I'm impressed, my I'm friend. Nice. I'm a good listener, man. I've got big ears. Uh, okay. How do, how are the Russian, uh, under which name are the Russian uh, athletes competing at these games? Because we know they cannot compete under the Russian flag. Yeah. So, so the team is not even called uh, the Russian Federation. So they're, they're what is the them, name of the, yeah, they're yeah. calling them the Olympic athletes from Russia. Exactly. <laughs> Next one. What is the biggest natural enemy of organized Committee. What is the problem? What is the biggest problem they are facing uh, during the Olympics so far? Well, it's either all of the Olympians are having sex with each other, or <laughs> <laughs> the weather. It's got to be the weather. Yeah, exactly. I was I was referring to the wind, but you have a point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Most successful American snowboarder. 
Uh, Man, sure, Sean White. Sean White, definitely Sean White. Perfect. Yeah. I, I, I just yeah. want to mention as well, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, because uh, uh, the Irish uh, snowboarder, he finished, uh, Seamus Kelly, a very Irish name, uh, he finished 13th uh, overall, uh, which, uh, okay, fair play to him for a country that has no half pipe, has no snow, really, no skiing, no infrastructure, infrastructure. And, and and very little funding. Okay, he lives in America, but that doesn't matter. And, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's 13th in the world. He's an Irish snowboarder. He's 13th in the world. That's I think that's that's unbelievable. Fair play to him. And and the Irish athletes, um, you won't like this at all, uh, Johnny. They've come in for some uh, some slack, some heat from people in the media who say that Ireland shouldn't be competing. And uh, I say to those people, you know, go to hell because. If if you can compete and 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 we had we had two today who were skiing one f- or, or uh, the man finished fifty second the woman finished fiftieth and to finish well, at that level when you have no infrastructure whatsoever and very very little funding I think that's absolutely fantastic and well done to Team Ireland. Exactly, I mean you cannot only have the big countries competing. That's the beauty of the Olympics. You have countries from, uh, sorry, you have athletes from countries that. Are you would not call them the winter nations, for example, but it's nice to see them there. And for them, it's a big effort to even get there and compete there. So it, they, they deserve all our respect. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree with you. Okay, next question. Next one. Youngest winner on snow in it's what nationality? So I don't need the name. I just need the nationality. Uh, this is this, this young girl. Um, uh, da, 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 Kim. Kim. Uh, Chloe Kim. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I just, uh, but I want to know the nationality of her. Oh, she's the the, the, the American. She's a uh, team. American. Yes, she's yeah. American with uh, South Korean parents. So yeah. she had plenty of support in uh, Pyeongchang. Okay, getting to the eighth question. I have nine questions for you. So this is the almost the last one. How many athletes uh, the Tonga have in these Olympic games? Oh man, that's a hard one. Um, it's you mentioned, very you mentioned the guy came out in the traditional dress. Uh, it's Tonga, but it's got to be small. I don't know. I'm, I guess four. Uh, man, this is very easy, but you just need to use your logic. One. It's only one. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's, 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 all, it's only him. I mean, what an idiot. It must be very difficult to pick a flag bearer when you, when you have only one athlete. You have no choice. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. The, na- the last question, and I'm sure you will know this because I know you. How many condoms were distributed in the Olympics? <laughs> what was it? Repeat it again. How many condoms were distributed in Pyeongchang? Oh, I remember just this. 110,000 condoms. <laughs> well done. Well done, everyone. <laughs> this was my last question. Thank you for taking part in, in the quiz. I think today you were excellent. Compared, compared to the first quiz, which was one more difficult, but I have to say you're a good listener. I'm a great listener. I'm a great listener. That's why I, I, I'm, a, I'm a great listener and I have a face for radio. Big ears and a face for radio. That's me. Pro tips to Johnny. Look, Johnny, thank you so much for doing this uh, Winter Olympics podcast episode number two with me again. I'm sure we'll do another one next week uh, in preparation for the final. And big thanks to Pro Tips to Dave for coming on and speaking about the ice hockey as well. That's it from us then, everyone. Make sure and check out protipster.com where we will give you money if you're good at sharing your, your winning sports tips. And if you're not good, sure, come on over anyway because there's loads of great tipsters over there who are very good at it and you can follow their tips. You can put them into your own profile. Follow them that way before you put down any money with the bookies and you can test out some strategies for, to- for 100% free before uh, you go and join the bookies with your uh, winning tips then after testing them for a while. All right, I'm rambling there a bit. So, look, thanks a million, everyone, for listening. Uh, we'll be back. Um, actually, when I'm going to put this out, put this out tonight. Well, uh, Johnny and I will be back uh, tomorrow with a tennis podcast. And, of course, our football podcast is already out as well. So, we have loads of podcasts. This is great. Pro Tipster is really taking off. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll speak to you soon. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster E-N or ProTipster I-R-L. Bye.